This is the captain of the Enterprise. Ship ship. Podcasting. The Final Frontier. These are the ridiculous introductions I am forced to read at gunpoint. Or should I say, phaser point. Welcome to Ship to Ship, yet another in the long line of tedious Star Trek podcasts. The show is hosted by David Lawler and David B. Anderson. The two Davids will take you on a journey through time and space every three or four weeks, boldly podcasting where no podcast has gone before. Seriously? This is what you're making me read? Take it away, boys. I really hope I can find a nice HD. I want a beautiful HD rendering of Enterprise D. And the only thing they had available was something from Picard, the beginning, the, the first episode where we saw that nice flyby of the, of the Enterprise mm-hmm. D. But it was really bad quality. I need to find... Well, you can take all the all the next-gen shows have been redone in HD. They have, you... No, but what I'm looking for is something that's widescreen, not four to three. That's the problem. I because everything something from, else. Uh, something from generations, perhaps. I found well, I would it, I would want it to be of a certain aspect ratio, like twelve eighty by seven twenty, and and generations was shot Panavision, so it's letterbox. You that can way. zoom in a little. And... Somebody I I forget the name Neon Neon somebody did these incredible HD renderings of the opening titles of Deep Space Nine and Voyager, their own on their own. They did it on their own. Mm-hmm. And they were gorgeous. And then I, you know, I tied that in with Enterprise. You, well, you saw the episode, right? Did you see the intro? I uh, of of what? The intro of our two Davids ship to ship episode. Yes, you showed a whole bunch of different little yeah, clips. Yeah, I mean, they had a gorgeous. Before, yeah, they had gorgeous renderings of the original Enterprise from Star Trek and and Deep Space Nine and Voyager. Enterprise mm-hmm. already was shot in widescreen, so it was easy to find a nice, beautiful beauty shot. But I couldn't find a decent beauty shop of, of Enterprise D. It's just lame. Okay. Uh, what is this? Uh, yeah, this is Ship to Ship, actually. This is not going to be a Two Davids episode. This is a Ship to Ship episode. Yes. Are we bringing back the show? You want to bring back the show? <sighs> well, why not? We, we, we're all <laughs> both trapped at home. We can just watch Star Trek and bitch about it while the world crumbles around bitch it. Sure. About it while the world crumbles. That should be a song. Let's bitch about it. Oh, who, yeah. who should do it? Uh, Cheryl Crow or or Joan Osborne? Why not? Why not? Uh, why not the 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 android girl? She sings at the end of this episode. Uh, for crying in the beer. Yeah, I was uh, I was completely unaware of that fact. We're talking about episode ten of Picard. This is the final episode of the season. Um, and I'll, oh my god! Oh my god! You know, okay. was there anything in this you like? Because I'm I'm about. 50 50 of stuff I liked and stuff I didn't like. There were a couple of things I might have enjoyed. The problem was, I felt like when we got down to it, we didn't need the first eight episodes. We really could have actually told the story starting here and perhaps maybe sustain this level of the story because a lot, a lot of it reverses everything that we saw before. I really didn't like the idea. I mean, like in the first, well, in episode nine. It was episode nine that they go to this planet, right? The planet yeah. with the space orchids, right? Mm-hmm. They go down there. You've got this android sex cult community doomsday thing going on. It seems it turns out. I mean, like the the androids are also doomsday types, and they're going to. They're so pissed off that they're going to wipe out humanity, starting with the Romulans. I'll wager, and it winds up fulfilling this whole thing. You spend your time throughout the whole show thinking that the androids are the good guys, when it turns out that they can be turned. Uh, just as bad as the Romulans might have, or oh. much like much like humans can be turned good, then bad, then good, then bad. <laughs> I've noticed like there's so many different things where it's like you think that like uh, that have to do with the the I don't I I, I can't remember the name of the doctor Alison Pill the her character um, um yeah uh, oh fuck what is her Agnes Agnes something Agnes yeah. Uh, she's like first I she's her first she's good, then she's bad, and then she's good again, and then she's forgiven. Yeah, that I don't understand. She is a murderer. Why isn't she behind bars? Instead, she's glad handing Captain and, and even 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 uh, uh, Sung the Fourth. Um, he's an asshole, but then he's not. And he's kind of you like know a, it's weird. Uh, some, somebody had a theory that it was going to be lore, that it was going to be lore in disguise. I guess not. I guess. It well, they can still do lore. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, okay. How, how much can I talk about? Are we going to kind of like chronologically go through the episode, well, or can if, I? If can you I... want to spoil it, sure. But Jesus Christ, you don't have to really talk about the whole fucking thing. 
<laughs> there's really not that much when you think about it. Well, I mean, okay, I did like, uh, you know, fuck it, we'll talk about it. Uh, talk about it, yeah. I liked, I actually liked mm. the Picard death, not death, because, uh, mm, and I'll tell you why, mm, I'll tell you why. Mm. First of all, as it's as it's happening, I'm like, oh, he's dying, and I'm like, I literally, like a couple scenes before, they're talking about how um, Dr. Sung has like some sort of like body transfer thing, and I'm like, okay, I've already done this this story math, you've already set it up. Uh, that he's going to like, he's not going to die. So when he's dying, I'm like, he's not going to, I'm talking to the TV. He's not going to die. Having said that, I would say it was a better death than uh, Kirk's death in generations. Mm. I felt because he, 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 it was a way to kind of have their cake and eat it too. Yes. He had that sort of brain disease that he, that Q said he was going to have, but then he gets his consciousness transferred into another body, I guess. And he's like, I thought it was funny. He's like, you could have given me another 10, 20 years at least. I, I liked that part. They had to do, yeah. They, they had, and I also they, liked. They had no when, way to escape that. This is one of the major problems with the story for me, the book, go on. When he, when he, when he met Data at the end, kind of in that sort of, like in that sort of netherworld. That before, weird dream. Uh, it's like a dream. A dream world. And he met, he met him. Cause I think it's kind of, cause they were basically kind of the same thing at that point, because he was using sort of you know, the, the, the synth technology. So it was kind of like much like, and it was like the last bit of data was there. So he was able to communicate with him in that room. Mm. And I felt like that was, first of all, I was thinking about this of like, they go full referencing, um, nemesis a lot, a movie that I, that I personally liked and I thought might, might be the best, next gen movie yeah. but a lot of people didn't and for a lot of people it's like it's best left forgotten for, for them to completely just go no it happened, completely, did happen. I mean, the whole thing seemed to have been like you know we talked about this before like the writers uh look looked at a handful of episodes that they considered exemplary they based much of the story on the measure of a man from season two and most mm -hmm. of it from nemesis and they even have data in the nemesis uniform Nemesis yes, Harry and I like I I did like and I liked the the scene. I liked I liked how it, it did kind of give you this weird closure on data of like his final thing to become human was to die. It was almost like uh, what was that the bicentennial man with uh, Robin Williams. It was kind of <laughs> the same thing of like he wanted to live a life and then die, and that's kind of poignant. And that that's I'd say that's very Star Trek. Of but it. but it's he's, one Star Trek thing that happens. But as it stands he lived a shorter life than everyone else. Everyone else uh, is still alive and he dies first. Yeah. But the thing is, uh, no one's when he's the youngest. Wars, technically he's like, what he's a handful of years old when the story started, when next year, right, he's probably started. maybe 40, maybe. No, I wouldn't if even say that. I would say maybe 20 the show when or, it was created. Less, I mean, but the thing is we know, one, they still have before, so he's got he's still got all that positronic stuff in before. Okay, they could make another data. Two, Wait, there was no mention, was there? Oh, oh what? Yeah, they did at mention. the beginning when they pull him out of the drawer. Two, there's still lore. Remember, lore was taken apart. I mean, I have this. I had a conversation with my brother. This was literally like 30 years ago when this happened, of like how they could easily bring back lore. All they have to do is, you know, they cut to Lieutenant Broccoli. He's fucking around in some lab. <laughs> and he's like, look what I put together. <laughs> oh, you're talking about Dwight Schultz? I'm talking about Dwight Schultz. He's still alive. Bring him in. Mr. Why Broccoli. Not? <laughs> Mr. Broccoli. Oh, dear. Yes. Um, there you go. Bring in but, Broccoli. Yeah. Bring in. Okay. I... There you go. You got lore. You can have lore. I liked it. I, I thought it was it was iconic. I, I got a little choked, a little verklempt. There was what, one, like, I, for me, I... Uh, for me, I, I, there was one scene that I did enjoy in the whole mm -hmm. thing. Uh, it was Riker coming to the rescue with all the stuff. Yes, and that that was something that kind of pissed me off because because it reverses all of this an antipathy that Starfleet had for Picard. Suddenly they're 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 well, listening that's great, to him. But if he was in the fucking beginning credits, and when he doesn't show up for almost to the end of the episode, and they're waiting on Starfleet to show up, I'm like, they're gonna show up, and Riker's gonna be ahead of it. And I'm like. Fuck it, he is. And he looked great, by the way. He cleaned up good. Yeah, he cleaned it. He didn't look like a wild man. He didn't look all and... disheveled making pizzas, yeah. Yeah, and the uniform looked fine, too. Uh, that was the one part I enjoyed. Um, I did enjoy a little bit Picard's dream discussion with Data, even though it got a little bit... I, I, I wrote in my notes, 
that this reminded me of how Lost ended, and and Lost was an ending that made me so angry watching it. Because yeah, me I, too. Me too. I thought it literally. I I felt like Lost literally crapped out literally like the last two minutes. It was going somewhere, and then it went nowhere. Yeah. Purgatory, or or purgatory, or, or exactly. Whatever else it was, it was. They were all in some church, glad handing each other. There there were questions that could have been asked in 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 this first season that were never asked. No. I was thinking of um Blade Runner or or maybe Artificial Intelligence, the Spielberg movie. And I was thinking about what gives man the spark of his di- divinity. What is a man's soul? How does one successfully replicate replicate a soul? Because uh, I, I thought about it when I was watching Blade Runner too. And uh, mm-hmm. and I was thinking, if humanity has no regard for its own creatures, why should they care for those it has constructed? And how do you construct sentience? How do you construct the spark of humanity? In a television show that has no appreciation or respect for either the value of humanity or of its, collect- its collective life, uh, the Picard is a show that hates um, humanity or it hates life and it's it's extremely violent to its characters it's extremely mean to its characters well, and it does go against the whole thing with star trek i don't mind conflict conflict is a great thing deep space nine was a fantastic show uh but this was it felt like they were trying to be violent they were trying to be nasty to i don't know they wanted to say this isn't your daddy's star trek and that's well, it's like you're saying it hates it's like it hates good storytelling because it's all over the place and and it, 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 the over reliance on the story arc. There's you know monster of the week episodes. I've always enjoyed. They've always been my favorites. I've never been a big fan of story arcs. Like the X Files is a great example. The mythology was interesting in small doses, but when they started being more about the mythology and less about Mulder and Scully investigating monsters of the week, I tune out. You know, uh, and I, I I know you know this started for me. This started I it, probably for you too. If you watch the same stuff I watched back in the day. Remember yeah. Buffy, Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Uh, that's one of the shows I did not watch. Now, Buffy the Vampire Slayer started with um, intriguing story arcs for the first two years. Then, in starting in season three, it started to be about higher stakes. It started to be about the apocalypse, the destruction of all humanity, and it just kept getting bigger with each season. And it got to unbelievable proportions because they had to keep topping themselves every every season. And it continued with Doctor Who. Doctor Who was another one. Uh, early on, it started to be about the end of the world. We're at the end of the world. Oh, it must be the end of the season. It's the end of the world. And that's well, yeah. That's, you got to raise those. Now, are we talking about old Doctor? Are we talking about we're old talking about fun? the new Doctor Who, the two thousand five. Actually, I started watching Doctor Who, and then as soon as they had the one season with Christopher Eccleston, which I really liked because he was out of his damn mind. Hmm. I like that, but then he left, and I'm like, eh, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. And I'm that, okay. But that that season even ended with an end of the world doomsday. Scenario. Well, of course, so you gotta but have it a got big opening. Bigger every season. Every season there was a bigger threat that was gonna wipe us all out, and it was up to the doctor to save everybody. And it just that's just how it kept going for years, for years and years and years. I stopped watching Doctor Who after uh, the this the the first uh, Jodie Whittaker season. I, I just wasn't interested anymore. And it wasn't it wasn't Jody Whitaker's fault. Uh, there well, was you some... held on that long. You, you I, I, I honestly, as soon as I watched I would every once in a while, through. I kind of look at it like, oh, that looks interesting. But then as soon as Matt Smith and his weirdly shaped head, I, I couldn't you know, take it. I enjoyed, couldn't take it. I enjoyed um, Eccleston. I thought he was wonderful, but I really love David Tennant. I think he's my favorite. Um, yeah, Matt. Smith. I did watch that. I, I watched that one when they had like the, the, the like the, when they had uh, John Hurt and they even had the doctor. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was the special. Uh, J- uh, the, J- McGann from uh, from the movie, from the, the one TV movie. It was like the 15th, um, they, 50th they, anniversary special. And again, I like that. One, yeah. That was another apocalypse thing where you got. Well, of course. So we keep doing this and we're going to keep doing this. And it's going to drive me crazy because I, I prefer isolated stories where we have a plot we have the resolution we have conclusion we have conflict we get through it all end credits you don't have to there was no way to watch star trek picard standalone one episode there was no way to no you had to watch every single one and that's that's just no way to tell a story because there's nothing there it's it's really it really it bores me well i mean okay look at it this way from a business standpoint of in order to watch Picard, you actually have to subscribe to their service, at least if you're doing it right. Yeah. Which means all the episodes will be there. People watch TV that way now. Yeah, but they don't have to. I mean, like, <laughs> what the hell is what the hell is so wrong with just telling a story and then being done with it? 
Well, they were. It just took 10 episodes, except they did a very bad job of it. Well, it's like I was saying with the X-Files. They had their mythology stories. They would intersperse their mythology into the overall. They had a plan for the season. So it'd be like, well, hey, they gave you I've got a great idea about this. Thing. Okay, we'll do that. The, we'll throw this in. And we have game. At the end of the episode, they they dropped some bombs. Now, you see, like, the doctor and the and the ship's captain, they kind of have a romance thing. You kind of see that coming. They have a little kiss, and that's fine. Yeah. But then you have... Then what do you have? You have uh, oh, you have uh, Jerry Ryan holding hands with Rafi, apparently. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> uh, was this was not addressed at all? If anything, Rafi should have been with the with the uh, with the with the with the uh, with the Romulan dude. If anything, they were closer. I, I don't know what. I think it's kind of sick, actually. If you ask me, I think it's a bunch of, I think it's a bunch of uh, heterosexual men who just want to think that inside every woman is a lesbian. <laughs> That's what I think. I think it's a dirty man. It's a dirty old man's fantasy. They want. Well, no, I, look, I've I've dealt with enough women to know they're not all lesbians, but they're extremely naughty, and they just don't want us to know. I. But it's not. I mean, like, you know, there are lesbians, there are bisexuals, and then there are people yes. that are curious. Uh, Jer Jerry Ryan's Seven of Nine never struck me as anything more than strictly dickly. It, she always yeah, seemed to be. I got a question in about her now. Was she? Was she human? Before she got taken, and when was she taken, and what's that whole story? Because Seven I of nine? didn't watch. Oh, well, she was yeah. taken when she was roughly nine years old. She was a human female. Her name was Annika on, Hansen. Her parents, on Earth? Or no, was she no. on Earth? Her parents were studying the Borg. Uh, they were, <laughs> oh, that's smart. <laughs> they were studying them, and they got caught, and they were all of assimilated. Course. Okay. So that's what happened. I was, for some reason, I had it in my head that it was it was a really good it was it was actually a really good movie event that they put on uh, Voyager. These two episodes, it was called uh, Dark Horizon, and mm -hmm. it shows the backstory of Seven of Nine when she was a little girl. Her parents were scientists. They they applied to the Federation to go out and study the Borg. They went into Borg space. Uh, they studied them in much the way that, like, say, a uh, naturalist or a zoologist would study tigers or lions. Very dangerous, so they stayed. They cloaked themselves uh, to keep away from being sensed by the Borg. Unfortunately, their mm. cloak failed, and then they were eventually captured and assimilated. Mm. I, I want to say something that might be controversial to you or anybody that listens to this. I got to say, overall, I think I enjoyed... A considerable more amount I enjoyed the second season of Discovery than this because that had that had the Enterprise, that had Captain Pike, that had Spock, it had action, you had number one. There okay, you, yeah. Uh, like I, that I was, would agree. That was more I, interesting. I agree with you up to a point. Um I thought the first half of Discovery's second season was way stronger than how it ultimately resolved itself. That story went out of control. It started not to make any sense. Um, but I did love the battle. At, the, at least they got a battle. My this, favorite you didn't even bits, get a battle at the end. Captain Pike was probably my favorite bit of that. Mm -hmm. I think he was wonderful, and I think, what's her name, Melissa George, who played Vina. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought she was great. I cannot stand the show when it puts its emphasis on Michael, though. She is not strong enough a character. To, to carry well, the show. I like Spock. Remember, they had Spock. The, the, every time they bring in a new Spock, you're like, are they going to be able to do this? Like, he did a very good job. Spock was was interesting. He's a fine actor. He's an okay actor. He was an okay actor. Uh, they didn't give number one, you know, Rebecca Romaine enough yeah. to do. I, I would have wanted to see more of her. Why did they cast her? She's like a name, and they had her doing nothing. They had her eating a cheeseburger for five seconds with Captain Pike, and that was it. Um, <laughs> but... I didn't like the way they tried to shoehorn Michael Burnham's story into Spock's story because this is everything we, we don't, we, you know, they, I feel like you were, they were just throwing them in. It was like fan, it was like a, uh, um, no, what was that? it was like fan fiction in a way. Oh, I called her a slip in. In one of my reviews for Discovery, I called her a slip in. And that's me, that's my own definition. I trademarked that idea. Copyright Dave <laughs> Waller, 2019. Uh, it's basically if you were to write a story, where uh, Alderaan was destroyed by the Death Star. You were Leia's boyfriend. You were not on the planet at the time. You reunite with her just in time for her to get cozy with Han Solo because you want to be her, her boyfriend. Okay, that, that's how I felt they were writing Michael Burnham here. They were writing her as a slip into this already established fiction. I know it's ridiculous anyway because it's all canon, canon, it's all fiction anyway. But I felt like they were slipping her in to, to, to make her make fans like her. Make fans now, like her by doing that. That's, I got that's a question. I you, you've been talking about because right now you you have been legally watching. 
America. He has been legally watching CBS All Access. He's been going over to a friend's place. I've been going place. over to a friend's house, yeah. Now, but you are, you said you were going to subscribe. Are you going to subscribe? What's going on there? You know, I don't know now because uh, I, I have problems with the uh, sound output on the television. I'm, Interesting. I'm gonna have to. This get... is the, this is the new TV, right? This is the nice the nice TCL with the yeah. Roku it's a nice TCL. Camera. What happened was the panel, um, the panel where the headphone jack goes, which is mm -hmm. where I usually connect from that TV. I don't yeah. do it now. I do, I do it through my cable box now, so I have everything coming in through the cable box. But I don't have access to CBS All Access on my cable box. Only through the TV. That's right. So uh, what I'm gonna have. So to... you're having problems with the yeah. That's what happens if you use that those those like I even same way on my computer. The thing will get frayed. It'll get like weird. I know what you're talking about. My suggestion is spend money, get a proper receiver, and have it that can take an HDMI in because then you have HDMI. I, I do. I, I I tried it. I tried. It has several different outputs. It has a digital audio output that doesn't work. Yes. Oh yeah. Use that. Use that. It doesn't work. I tried it. I bought a I bought a cable. It doesn't uh, work. Oh, then you might have to go. You know what? Uh, I'll maybe I can talk you through it. You go into the setting. There are different settings on there where it's like sometimes it will I tried. show. Like, I got because... the manual. I can't get it to work. And I have an HDMI out on that too. And I have it going into the receiver, and it's not working either. I don't well, understand what's going weird. on. There, there might be a setting. I, you know, I can again. I can talk you through it because we have basically the same TV. I'll look at my settings and I see if I can. I was thinking that I would just get a Roku box with a uh, with a headphone jack. And they don't have it. headphone jacks. No, uh, there all, is. All there, it, yeah, there's a Roku box that they have that has a headphone jack on it. Oh uh, no! It's well, they, okay. Bucks, here, here's but... here's what they have. Here's what they have. You can get a Roku box, but it'll have like a left right audio output is what it'll have. Um, and but it's like a special. It can only. I think I'll have to look it up, but like they have like an old style video plug and a couple of audio plugs. But yeah, I think, you know, I can talk you through it. I think I can help you figure it out. It's like when I did with my mom where she put it on mute. <laughs> That's probably what happened. You maybe you put it on. No, mute. I, I have been checking. No, that would work. I've been that wouldn't matter. If it was digital. It wouldn't matter. I don't know. Again, America, I will help him. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's we should probably wrap this one up, but yes. I can say uh, I will say. Oh, I was extremely disappointed that Picard became an android at the end because I felt like they were, uh, they had they had written themselves into a corner by making him yeah. sick and dying. Uh, instead, what could have been done was to to possibly pursue a cure, that could have been part of a good running subplot for ten episodes. They mm -hmm. could have found perhaps that, like, um, okay. <laughs> It's so funny because Nerd Roddick had a really funny terminology that they used. He called it the magic bullshit box. And it's like this device that can change a story completely. Uh, but they could have used a magic bullshit box to cure to cure Picard. Uh, perhaps it could have been something. Perhaps more money could have been put into this little Android community. And maybe they were all medical researchers and could have had a cure for him on the books that they didn't know about. Something along those lines. I don't like the idea of Picard being an android, cause to, uh, android because he, to me, he's dead. To me, yeah. he doesn't. I as, as much as I was moved by Data's passion to be human, I knew in my heart he could never be human. That's what made him a very attractive character, mm -hmm. is that he will never know or experience humanity. If he does, he'll wind up like his daughter, Lal, who could not handle humanity. And died. I, I think that this was an uh, an idea of because remember some of this had to do with getting Patrick Stewart to come back, and if you watch like there's that that, that final maybe maybe because I know you're not watching like the Ready Room thing with Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. I, really, I know you're not I mean, watching like, those. I, I don't want to be disappointed. The last episode he comes on and he talks about how they finally got him to come back because they did something different with it. That was what got him to come back. So he wanted to do something different. He wanted to kill him and and do something different. That was so blame Patrick Stewart. I well, I I don't know that you know it, would you really say that Patrick Stewart had this idea? I, I, well, actors, he's actors an always want to do. So I don't know. I don't act, know. He's an excellent the actor. Thing is, he actors been, always want to do something different, and I think maybe he went into this saying, "I'm not going to do the traditional Picard. I want to do something different." You know, yeah. and it's, it's possible that he did, but this is so radical. You can't, it's not like Star Trek Picard anymore. Now it's Star Trek with Picard in parentheses. You know, it's sort of like, I mean, I really wanted to see more of that kind of 
you know, Starfleet thing where, you know, that's why it was so great to see the ships, at least, and, and have Riker. And you really felt for a second there, this could be Star Trek. And there was a moment, you know, that moment where he said, I will go to Starfleet and I will make them lift the ban on synthetics. And the thing is, I really felt like I was watching Star Trek there for about two seconds. You know, mm-hmm. I felt like there was well, they had the spirit there and then it went away because yeah, it's the all whole thing with violence. violence and it's intrigue. It's it's weird, incestuous Romulan boyfriend, sister, brother thing going on. It's creepy. Yeah. It's that Commodore. O. I mean, in Commodore. Oh, they set her up as some kind of a badass. And she fucking she she pussies out when Riker threatens her, you know, well, and it's, and it's like, uh, what? I mean, like, I thought we were I thought we were being set up for a real villain here who had balls. And she's like. Uh, we'll be leaving now. Yeah. And he's like, and we'll also, show you the door. And honestly, he says, that's not necessary. And he says, no. A, a, like, a, like idea, allegiances change. And I mean, look, when they, when they bring up the Picard maneuver. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this, oh, this was something I wanted to point out. This was like the weird Twilight Zone thing. Of, okay. So you know how she, uh, uh, the doctor, like they, she shows multiple versions of herself, like on the screen. I sent you the picture. Right. Yeah. Oh, I, God. I swear. Right before I watched Picard, I watched this other show that she's on where she also plays the doctor. Although on that, she's like kind of like weirdly yeah, quiet. I, I evil. forgot the name of that show. She is on another show. And I forgot the name of it. It's called Devs. As Devs. In like development. Devs. Devs. Okay. Yeah. And, on that and one of the episode writers that I watched the right of before, right, right before I watched Picard, I watched an episode of that show with her in it. And on that episode, there's multiple versions of her. Like, cause it's like, it's all about like parallel realities and everything. And she walks out of a building and then like, you see like different versions of herself walking in different parts of outside on the steps right. and everything. So I see multiple versions of her on that. And then I watch Picard and d- d- she does it again. So she's everywhere. It's interesting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really don't know how to gauge her acting because uh, everybody seems so, everybody seems like tired and bored watching it. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, it's it's so funny when you watch those 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 uh, ready room shows. They seem so passionate about what they're doing yeah, and how they think they're, they're making to... the best show ever. Well, they're selling and... you a product, yeah. I know, but as a man, they're good actors. I mean, they're not going to be Catherine Heigl and say, "Look, this part is bullshit. I took it for the money." Okay. Yeah. You can't have Catherine <laughs> Heigl. Have never, we haven't seen her in anything for ten years. Yeah, she, they, they don't like that. They want you to be and say, "Oh my God, this is the most incredible thing! I was so excited to be a part of this and work." And Patrick was wonderful, and everybody. Yes. And I got to meet Jonathan Frakes, and he's a great director. And oh, it was so wonderful. Yeah. It'd be like Arnold when he's promoting that uh, Total Recall is the best movie <laughs> in the history of mankind. Speaking of which, I mean, during during the whole uh, shelter in place. We watched a bunch of Schwarzenegger movies this week. <laughs> we start well. First, we started off with Twelve Monkeys, which I thought was a perfect. Uh, That's not an old Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah, well, we started with Twelve Monkeys because it was on the thing because I taped it. Right, it's a perfect movie to watch during this whole thing. And um, and then yeah. then I had we watched Total Recall first. Great, mo- a great movie. <laughs> Just fantastic I, I, to watch. I believe I heard it once referred to as an ultra violent Arnold fest. I would I would call it that. Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Um, and then after that, we watched Last Action Hero because <laughs> I had. Uh, oh no! I'm sorry. And then, um, um, and then we finished it up with the Terminator uh, on Friday. Well, are you gonna do more because God damn it, Commando. I don't. Now, that's no, unfortunately. Uh, those, that is. Those are the only three Schwarzenegger movies right now on HBO or Showtime. Uh, I got uh, Commander was on Cinemax. I don't know if you have Cinemax. No, I don't. There. I wish I did, but I don't. I got Showtime as part of a deal. They didn't want to get rid of me as a customer, so they gave me Showtime. Um, yes. I don't know what we're going to be watching next, but uh, well, you got lots of you got lots of like weird burned Blu-rays and DVDs. Or just whip something out. I'm thinking of a nice. I think we need to watch comedies, and I think all of us need to watch comedies now that Picard is done and we're still under quarantine. We need to watch comedy. Everybody, watch some comedy and laugh. Damn it, laugh. <laughs> laugh, God damn it, laugh. <laughs> uh, and, and, and my daughter said when she saw Schwarzenegger, she was like, he looks like a child made him out of clay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said when she first saw Schwarzenegger. I don't think she ever watched a Schwarzenegger movie before, I, before wow. we watched these. Oh, wow. She's not, wow, I mean, wow, you know, wow. it's it's hard. I'm working on her. I'm working on her. I want her to be a movie fan. Well, like you I know, am. she's 13. This is just, it's just the right age to get into his movies. Although, again, Commando. <laughs> Commando is one of the most awesome because it's so Commando bad. Commando is but great. So I love Commando. I loved, uh, I mean, you know, the thing about Terminator, 
uh, it's really very cheesy. The first Terminator movie, I know it's a classic. Everybody loves it and everything. It's a very cheesy movie to watch, especially these days. I think it would actually benefit from from a reboot because then it has it's been rebooted like four times no, i mean just the story as it is proper start and also, over at the beginning I, I argue with my wife constantly about terminator because it doesn't make any sense there's a lot of time travel stuff in there that makes no sense if everything was done exactly to plan there shouldn't have been any sequels but then uh, unfortunately we wouldn't have the best movie in the entire yeah, franchise which yeah. is t2 uh, t2 uh, is the best movie and I really the best, uh, Terminator 2 is the best movie. And the only thing um, Terminator made me do was want to see T2 again. Because T2 is true. A it is a great movie. Film. It's a laser disc classic. It is an it's improvement. The one they always put I mean, on. It's very rare that you'll find a movie. Empire Strikes Back, obviously. Karate Kid 2, of course. Uh, yes. What? Jaws 2, of course. It's very hard to find a sequel that's better than the original. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to get, get to Conan? Uh, Conan the Barbarian? Yeah. Hmm. Or Conan the Destroyer. That guy, that guy's is fun. I don't know. I don't know if um, I don't if I can find it. Of course. I mean, like, of course, all of this is dependent on whether or not I can find them on my cable channels, mm -hmm. or or on on Netflix. You know, mm -hmm. I have to see. I don't know if I have anything. If I if I even bought anything, I'm not even sure. I have to check. But you know, I mean, I I do. Oh, True Lies. True Lies is is one of my favorite Schwarzenegger movies. I love that one. It's okay. I think it's fantastic. I feel like we just made another show here. We were, we were so bored with Picard, here. we started talking about Arnold. Star Trek Schwarzenegger. Star Trek Schwarzenegger. Make it so. Well, you know, we could always have like the, the alternate universe Star Trek Four with Eddie Murphy in it. <laughs> playing um, playing basically the scientist that they did sort of turned in and put. Yeah, he was supposed to have been she like. She put him a, in the friend zone anyway. He was, supposed, he was supposed to have been a nutty professor type. That's what he was yeah. supposed to be playing. It was he was going to be more comedy, but it's, I guess he wasn't available. Or they had they had a back and forth, and he wasn't available. Double dumbass on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's uh, let's stop now. Um, you know, yes, thanks, please. Thanks for listening. Jesus Christ, Star Trek Picard is over until they figure out some crazy. Well, they bring it back. I, we'll, you know, we'll we'll start bitching about um, Discovery because that's coming back at least for one more season. Now I say that we continue, and the next time next time we talk, I want to talk about I want to I want to do the stuff we promised, which was time travel. I wanted us to do not necessarily. Oh, we'll start speaking of Star Trek Four. Yeah, yeah, Star Trek Four, but also those those choice episodes of all the franchise, and I'll bring them up, and you can talk to them. But no, we but don't. Did, didn't we already do? Didn't we do the the. I forgot was, uh, where, uh, the the what Joan Collins one. Didn't we already do that one? We did a well. We did a tribute to Harlan Ellison because he died. So we talked about City on the Edge of Forever. But we okay. talk about all that all those other great time travel episodes and all good things, of course. Mm -hmm. We talk about that as well. So you know, it's good to be back, America, ship to ship, and we probably will get viewers for this one because it's. You know, I hope so. Please listen, watch. We need. Maybe we'll actually make money, and we then we won't have to get real jobs, or at least I won't have to get a real job. <laughs> You already get. You're already set. Man. The Star Trek audiences are the greatest audiences in the world. Good night, everybody. Good night. You have been listening to Ship to Ship, a Star Trek podcast, with your hosts David Lawler and David B. Anderson. To find out more about us, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us at www.blissville.net or on Facebook at Misadventures in Blissville. Good night.